not talk too long so we can get to our groups. Um, that's that's a, a really important thing that we don't want to forget about. So um, glad that you're here. Uh, everybody's doing good? Okay, have a good afternoon. Um, here's the thing, guys. It's already been eight weeks. Uh, that has gone so fast. It's been eight weeks already, and you guys are still here. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, eight weeks, uh, we've, we've made it, and uh, it's been good. And then, I um, mean, you think about the last uh, eight weeks, uh, man, we've, we've uh, got to study together, right? Everybody's in the, in the Word every day going through these things, and we've studied those things together. We're in the Word together. Um, as small groups, we've, we've prayed together uh, for each other, with each other. Um, that's not just been in our prayer experience, but I'm sure you've been praying for one another uh, throughout this eight weeks. Um, and and uh, we've got to serve together, some of us. Some of us are still waiting to do that, but, but uh, a lot of us have had our service uh, projects together. Um, and I've already heard awesome things about that, uh, that they're going to even try to continue to do some things in the future, which is awesome. Praise God for that. Um, it's, been, it's been a good eight weeks. So, so let me ask you a question. Question, all right, and you guys can you guys can spit it out. Um, if you could sum up with one word to describe the last eight weeks, what would it be? One word to describe the last eight weeks of Rooted, what would it be? Silence. Inspiring. Okay. Truth. Somebody else said some. Prayer. Challenging. Community. Any others? Connected. Okay. That's a good one. Growth. Or did someone burp? <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy burps. It wasn't growth. It was growth. Okay. <laughs> growth. Yep. Any others? Intentional. Yeah, good. Any more? All good words, okay? Uh, maybe someone grabbed yours, and I, I know there's more, um, and uh, those are those are awesome. So uh, l let me let me stop just for a minute, and I'm going to pray, um, and then we'll walk into this this talk, uh, which you guys already know what's coming because you've been studying it all week. So uh, let's <laughs> let's pray about it, and uh, we'll we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this morning, or for this morning, for tonight, and uh, for bringing us here, uh, God, and we, we praise you for uh, what you're doing uh, in our small groups, in these rooted groups, God, how uh, you've brought us together in these groups, you've put these these groups together, Lord, and um, these new relationships for many of us, and God, just being able to, to do what you've created us to do, uh, to, to have community, to serve together, uh, to pray together, to worship together, Lord, to, to study together, to sharpen one another and um, man it's exciting God and we know that it all comes from you uh, we praise you for, for all of it and uh, we just say thank you and Lord um, we're not done and I just pray in the next few weeks as we keep meeting as we keep uh, studying we'll, we'll keep growing and uh, Father even when, when this part of, of this chapter is done um, you'll lead us into what's next and God we put that in your hands um, and um, trust you 100% with where this is going. Um, Father, we love you. We thank you. I just pray you be with us tonight as we look um, at, at what can grab a hold of our heart so easily. God, that we'll have open hearts, that we'll have open minds to hear this. This is, this is difficult stuff, Lord, and you've challenged us all week long uh, in our studies of, of, of money um, and our heart. And God, I just pray tonight we'll listen, that these will be your words. So Father, please speak through me. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would, uh, if we need a, a place that, that needs convicted of that or something that needs convicted of that you would convict us and uh, you would give us courage to to move in it and to make some changes if we need to and so i i, I father uh, we want to offer our hearts to you um fully and, and so we just pray that you would uh, do what you need to do tonight and uh, for your glory and for your honor in jesus name we pray it. amen all right so uh, what are we going to talk about you guys Money, okay, yeah, we, we've all been studying it all, all week long, favorite subject, and just a reminder, okay, um, the reason we're meeting tonight uh, is because actually Rooted tells us to, that's why we're all together. Uh, we're not here to say we need your money, all right, uh, we're not here, we're not going to meet here to say that, that God needs your money, we all hopefully know that and been reminded of that, he does not need your money, he does not need my money. NLCC 
does not need your money. We're not here and gathered here to say, hey, help, we're, we're in dire need. We're not. We're doing okay and God is blessing us. Um, that's not why we're meeting together tonight, all right? Just, just so you know. What we're here to do is, as a group and as a whole, and, and, and I love this because you look around and see everyone here is on the same page. We're all doing the same thing. Um, it's been so cool to see this and, and hear your stories. And so what we're here to do tonight together is really kind of examine um, our hearts. Um, and so I just want to talk a little bit about it. We're going to read some scripture um, and when we kind of really take a good look at our hearts, and hopefully you've done that in some areas that's been happening in your small groups, as we've even looked at strongholds, how many really loved that week? Okay, tough. Um, tough when you really kind of take a look at, at what uh, strongholds are in your life and then have to share that with people. Um, some of you for the first time, some of you it's total strangers that you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this. It's hard to really kind of take a good look at your hearts and examine your hearts, but that's why we're here, even though it may make us a little uncomfortable uh, sometimes. Uh, because honestly, um, that's what Jesus goes after, right? Um, he's not after your money. He's after your heart. And my heart, that's what's most important to him. Um, and so, uh, as he goes after our hearts, um, he, he's going after the things that, that our hearts are tied to as well. Right? Um, and so there's things that are, are warring for our hearts that go after our hearts and Jesus is wanting to get uh, to the heart of that. Um, and it's all over the scriptures. What he gets at is he drills the heart the heart uh, of who we are and the decisions we make. So let me ask you this. When, when I want you to think about yourself and your own heart, and I'm going to dare you to be as honest as you can just by raising your hand. How many of you would say at one time or you struggle with sometimes uh, money having a, too much of a hold on your heart? Anybody struggle with that? Woo, okay. Thank you for being honest. Yep. Um, sometimes money can grab a hold of us a little too much, right? Uh, it grabs a hold of our hearts a little too much, and, and we, we struggle with it. It may be an issue. Here's the thing. It always has been. It always has been. And we're going to read Jesus' words here in a little bit. Uh, money has always been an issue for people and their hearts. Um, I'm just going to give you some, some statistics here, uh, and this comes from Rooted Material. You can check it out on this if you want to research this, but there are 500 verses on prayer, all right? 500 verses on prayer, even less than that on, on faith. You know how many verses are on, on uh, money or, or being generous or giving? 2,000. On, on giving, on money, on, on generosity, 2,000 verses on that. So what's that say to us? This is a huge issue for our hearts. This is really, really, really important for us to understand and has been all through time. God has something for us here uh, with this topic. Um, and and we, all, we all know that, right? And so what I want to do, uh, is, if you got your Bibles with you, is we're going to go to Matthew chapter 25. I stole your Bible, Dad. I'm using it. Matthew 25. Um, I'm going to start with verse 14. You guys are going to recognize some of this. But Jesus, Jesus uh, tells a story. And uh, I'm going to read, uh, let's see, I'm going to read through verse 18, okay? And we'll stop just for a minute. It says this. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants uh, and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to, one, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey, the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with uh, two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now, how many of you have a, a Bible that says talent? Anybody have a, say his talents, gave his talents, parable of the talents. Um, just kind of look that up. A talent, uh, we read here, is a, a bag of gold. A talent was just a sum of money, all right? Um, a, a pretty healthy sum. Um, kind of research this a little bit. One talent weighed between 58 and 80 pounds, this one payment. So, so we're talking about when this, when this master gave these servants uh, five bags, five talents, that's a lot of cash, uh, that's a lot of money. Even two 
was a lot of money. Even one was a lot of money. Okay, 58 to 80 pounds of cash, of gold. Um, quite a bit of money there. Let's keep going. So that's, that's what the talents was. Let, let's keep reading this. Um, verses 19 through 25. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share and your master's what? What's your say? Happiness? Does anybody say joy? Some more happiness? Okay. Remember that. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrust me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, he said, I knew you, knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was what? Afraid, and I went out and hid your gold uh, in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Now, we're going to stop, all right, and just uh, take, take some notes of things. The first two servants did what with their, with their money? They doubled it, okay? They did well. Uh, they did well with their money, and they got to share, Scripture says, in the master's what? Happiness, Okay, and his joy. They were able to share in that. The, the other guy, um, did you catch in verse 24, and this is really important, okay? And this is interesting as I studied it this week. In verse 24, look at that verse. The guy that, that, that buried it, okay, and brought back that bag, how did he view his master? Did you catch it? You are a very what? Hard man, harsh, okay, is, is another word that they use. A hard man, a harsh man. Um, he, he did not view him uh, as a generous master. He says, I knew you are a hard man or a harsh man. And, and so this is really interesting. So he, he saw this and he hid the money, right? He hid it. He didn't do anything with it and brought it back. So I just want, I want to ask a question here. So time out. How, I want you to ask this of yourself. How do I view God? I want you to think about that just for a moment. What's my view of God generally been? Okay, how do I view God? In, in light of how this man viewed the master, do sometimes we view God as, 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 as harsh or hard or waiting to, to, you know, squash us when we mess up? How, how do, how, what's my view of God Really? Just think on that just for a moment. Or do we, do we have a view of God that is generous? Do you, do you view God as, as a, a giving father um, who is so generous? Because here's the thing. Our view of God changes everything. Everything. Especially when it comes to our money and our giving, which we're talking about tonight. Our view of God changes how we use what he's given us. And so, uh, one, of the, one of the big reminders today for us tonight is this. And again, you guys have been studying this all week. Uh, we all have. But this is just a great reminder in how we view God. God is the owner. We are not. When it comes to everything we've got, just a reminder, right? God is the owner. We are not. Now, if we don't grasp this, and I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes I don't, right? Anybody forget that God owns it and I don't? Right? I can tell by my language even, my money, you know, my truck, my stuff. Um, uh, if we don't really get a hold of this and let this sink in, it's really going to be hard for us to be generous givers. If we don't really understand that God owns it all, that He owns it all, it's not mine, it's really going to be hard for me <laughs> to, to be generous with what he's given me because I see it as mine. And I don't know about you, but I can be really, really selfish with what I think is mine. Um, how many of you have kids or have had kids, small kids? What's one of their favorite words? Mine, right? It also reminds me of, oh, I had small kids. Finding Nemo, the seagulls. Mine, 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 right? That frame of mind with a D, okay? 
uh, that's one of their favorite words is, is mine, all right? Um, and it's just natural. But what, what would happen if, if, as adults, that never changed in us? What would happen if that attitude, that, that, that uh, thought of, this is mine, mine, never changed in us? What would that look like? Now, here's the thing. Sometimes it doesn't. And it may not look like mine, right? Or those seagulls, mine, mine. It may not, it may not come out like that, but here's generally what it comes out when, when we have this attitude and we haven't let go of that is we say things like, you know what, I, I deserve this. I really deserve this. Or, man, look what I've accomplished. Or, uh, you owe me. You, you owe me. Um, it comes out in those kinds of ways, this, this same attitude of mine as adults. You owe me. Look what I've accomplished. Um, all these things. I deserve this. The truth is, again, we don't own anything. It's not mine. It's, it's not yours. It's not ours. We are stewards. We, are, we, we have been given these things. Everything belongs to him. He's just letting us use it. Now, how cool is that anyway, right? If you stop and think about that, look at all that we have and all that he's given us. How cool is it that God has said, here, I want you to have this and I want you to use it. That's really cool. And we have such a generous, generous God. He is the owner. So let me ask you that question. Is that your view tonight? How many of you have been challenged in that this week? Have you been challenged doing your studying? You've been reminded? Oh, you're right. Dang, I forgot. God owns it. Is, is that my view when it comes to money? Or is it my money? It's my money. I mean, how do we live our lives? What, what decisions uh, is that affecting in, in what we give and, and how we use our money? And again, that view is so important. Go back to, to verses 24 through 25 again. The man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was what? Afraid, and I went out and hid it. I hid your gold in the ground. See what, what belongs to you. Here it is. He was afraid because of his view of God. It was skewed. It, was, it wasn't the right view. It was not a view uh, of a master who was generous. He was a hard and harsh man. That's what his view of the master was. He was afraid. He was afraid, and he hid it. So, so important. Because here's the truth. Our view of God will determine our response or our obedience. In all, in all things, right? Our view of God will determine our response and our obedience. In all things. Tonight we're talking about our money. Not, ooh, not our money. God's money. See how quick that is? <laughs> so fast. Eh, our view of God will determine all of that. Um, when we view God like this, we tend to think small. When we view God as, as this, this or, or even a, away from us and just kind of watching what we do or we see God as harsh or we see him as hard, a hard God or a judging God that's just waiting for me to mess up, we tend to think small and not so big, right? We think a lot smaller. Uh, we, we lose sight of what, uh, really what God has in store for us with what he's given us. Um, it, it keeps us from moving. There's fear there. I don't want to screw up. I don't want to screw up. Or I don't want to mismanage. I don't want to mismanage because I don't want God to get mad or, or whatever is going on in, in our hearts. And, and so um, we, can, we can tend to stop moving forward, stop giving, stop being generous, and we depend on our money. Our money, that becomes our view. So, another question. What if, all right, we saw God for who he really is? Okay, what if we saw God, and maybe you're there, maybe you're doing that, maybe you're growing in that, awesome. Okay, so what's that like? Seeing God, and be reminded of that this week, he's generous. He's given us so much. He's a generous father, a giving father, who's offered all this for you to manage, to steward to be a blessing to other people. And our view of God, what if we see God that way? How, how would that change the way we live? How would that change the way 
we give. I love this quote, and this comes from, from our studies. Okay? It says, if we don't trust him like a generous owner, we will never be a faithful steward. If we don't trust him like a generous owner, we will never be a faithful steward. So how do we view God? What do we do with what he's given us? That's the next question. So if that's, if that's the first reminder that God owns everything, um, I, I'm the steward having that view of God as a generous father. He owns it all. He's just given it to me to use. What, what do we do, okay? So let's go to another scripture, uh, 1 Timothy. We're gonna read 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. Listen to this one. We've read this one here too uh, before says this, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Did you hear the generosity there in God? Did you hear the, the, the generous father there? Did you miss that? Okay. Who put their hope in God, who richly, God richly provides us with everything, everything for what? Our enjoyment. He's a generous father. He's a good father. He's given you everything so you can enjoy it. It's okay to have some things, right? It's okay uh, to have that motorcycle you've always wanted. It's okay to enjoy that. I'm not looking at anybody over here. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, right? It, that's a blessing. It's a blessing. But remember who's it, who's it, who's it, who's it is. But he's given it to you to enjoy. Verse 18, command them, listen to these guys, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to, and to be generous and willing to share. And this way they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so they may take hold of the life that is what? Truly life. So that may take hold of life that is truly life. Uh, we've talked about this before and in the past, but I love this idea, this picture of living an open-handed life. Living open-handed, right? Uh, as, as followers of Christ, as his, his kids, and we have this generous father who is so open-handed with what he's given us, we're called to live open-handed lives, right? Not mine. I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna do what I want with it. That's not what we're called to do. But to live open-handed. I love that picture. Um, and here's the truth, guys. We are so rich, he says, to tell those who are rich, and, and a lot of us go, I'm not rich. Yeah, we are. Dad just talked about this not that long ago. We, we talked, spent two weeks on this uh, on, on Sunday morning. We are so rich. How many of you have a, a house with a roof on it? How many of you have a car that has its own house? Yep. Okay. Uh, right. How many of you get to sleep in a bed? Okay. Oh, guys, we're so, so rich. We're so blessed compared to the world. Listen, you, some of you are familiar with this. 34000 a year, okay, if you make that, okay, 34000 in one year, if you make that, you're in the top 1% of the world. We're rich. We are wealthy when we, when we compare ourselves to the world. Stop comparing yourselves to the Kardashians. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Kardashians. Ugh. But they're rich, right? They're, they got a lot of money. Bad example, sorry. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Stop comparing yourselves. Guys, we're loaded. We're rich. We're wealthy. God has given us so much. I can go to my cupboard, and here's how pathetic I can be, and I can open it up and say, man, there's nothing, there's nothing to eat. I hear my kids say that all the time. There's nothing in the fridge to eat. Oh, my goodness. There's so much. There's just nothing I want to eat at that moment, right? I want a Twinkie. There's no Twinkies. I'm spoiled rotten. We're so wealthy. We're so rich. Our Father has given us all we have. He really has, and he's blessed us so much. So, so here, and what the scripture's saying is, remember, you're rich. So he says this too. Don't put your hope in your wealth. We just read it. Don't put your hope there. Now, here's... here's Here's where it gets a little ouchy, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time. And we've studied this again, so I'm just, some of this is just repeat from what we're saying. This is where it's gonna get a little bit, okay? It might sting just a little bit. Um, don't put your hope in your wealth. This is where our debt comes into play. Okay, and I know that word is, is a, uh, okay? But you're gonna talk about it tonight in our groups. This is where debt comes into play. 
because we're putting our hope, honestly, when we get onto it, where? In what we can get. And so debt comes into play here. We become slaves. And, and when guys, when, and here's, and I know this is a tough statement, okay? And, and, and I'm talking about crazy, crazy amounts of debt, but sometimes when we're doing this, what we're saying to God in, in a way is, God, what you've given me isn't enough because we're pre-spending. We don't even have it, right? We've, we've pre-spent it. And, and, and in a big way, sometimes, guys, if, if we're piling on debt and more debt and more debt, kind of what we're saying to God is, God, what you've given me is not enough. And I, and I need more. Um, and I know that's a touchy thing, guys. Um, I, know, I know that it is. But he's saying don't put your hope in your wealth. It's not solid. It's uncertain, Scripture says. We just read it. It's uncertain. Right? It could go. Some of us know that. We lose it just like that. Don't put your hope there. So I want to ask a question tonight. Where, where's your hope? Where have you put that hope? Uh, have you put it in uncertain things? Like the things we can get? You know, piling up debt so I can, I can keep up with the Joneses, you know, next door? Is that, is that where you put your hope? If we, here's the thing. If we put our hope in uncertain things, what happens to our hearts? They become uncertain. We have uncertain hearts. And, and we kind of know this, even though we still keep spending. Because what happens? I get the next thing, and my heart still isn't, my hope has not been taken care of. My heart is still not full. There's always the next thing. And for some reason, I don't know about you, but I'm really dense. I think the next thing will be better. And so I, I, go, I go to the next thing. I'm, oh, sweet, for a week, you know. I remember buying my first Nintendo when I was in like sixth grade. I loved that thing. Saved my money for it. The original Nintendo, right? Old folks at my age anyway. Um, I played it for two weeks and then what happened? It just sat there, man. <laughs> and I was on to the next. You know what I mean? And, and so if, if we put our hope in uncertain things, un, you know, shaky things that can come and go, our hearts are going to be the same way. Uncertain. Shaky. Blown around. Um, Next thing is this, is, is Timothy says this, do what is good, be generous. Do what is good, be generous. This is, this is pretty simple. Um, when it comes to what God has given us, guys, we are blessed. We've already established that. Everyone in this room is rich. Um, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. Think about that. God has given you what you have. Man, this, this is a huge concept. Even for my, I'm just thinking about my own life. God has given me what I have so I can bless other people with it. Sometimes I do this with it. Anybody else? I don't want to. You know, that's, that's my truck, Lord, and she's a crazy driver. I don't want to let her borrow it. You know, whatever. But God has given us blessings so we can bless other people. It's really pretty simple. Now, you guys, um, I, I'm, I'm guessing that you, you, you started Rooted to grow. All right, we, we've really pushed this um, and, and we've, we've started this. You're a part of this. You signed up because you want to grow. Uh, you wanted to be challenged, right? To, to maybe move forward in your faith, to move forward in community, uh, to move forward in your relationship with Christ. Um, and so, so this is a challenge for us. Tonight, this week has been a challenge all week and tonight as we talk about it, it's gonna be a challenge in your small groups. But here it's very, very clear. We are called as followers of Christ to be generous givers. Are you hearing me? We are called as followers, as God's children, who he's blessed to be generous givers, to give and to give generously. That's, that's our call. And from the very beginning of Rooted, we said for some of us, this is gonna be a huge risk to commit to Rooted for 10 weeks. Remember? That first night. This is risky for some of us. And it, it's scary for some of us. I get that. Um, but what we're asking again tonight and what we're going with tonight is, is, is also, it's gonna be a risk for some of us. I know that for a fact. That this is a, this is a hard topic for some of us. Um, and so we're praying and, and we're praying that the Spirit moves and that, that, we'll ask, that you'll have to take some risks with His money that He's given you. And so we just want you to make a decision uh, and then move in it. So let me, let me wrap, it, wrap things up. And here, here's the challenge and then we'll go, we'll go talk about some of this, okay? Um, kind of the nuts and bolts. 
okay, as, as we talk about this. If you're not giving, okay, right now, um, as a part of a church, I know we have some, a couple different churches here. If you're not giving, now's the time. Now, I know some of you are saying, I don't have anything. I don't know what to give. We, 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 our money is so tight. Um, I hope you've done your studies and, and been reminded this week of, of, of the truth and been challenged in that. Now is, is the time. Again, not because the, the church needs your money, right? It's your heart. It's your heart. What's your heart tied to? What, what, what have you been putting your hope in? So, so, so some of you, when, when we say this, uh, again, it's just like, what am I going to give? We don't make much. Everything's taken up. All my money goes here. All my money goes here. I don't have anything left. Um, and, and, you know, we talk about the tithe, and that's 10%. I can't afford 10%. That freaks me out. I can't even do that. Listen, we're not even asking you to do that. Uh, give a proportionate gift. Start somewhere. Instead of just sitting and doing nothing and not giving anything at all, Start somewhere. Do 1%. Just start. Move. Take, take, a, take some step. Guys, listen, as tight as it can be, and believe me, I, I experience tight, tightness in my house too, okay, with four kids who eat a truckload of food, okay? I get it, man. Sometimes it is really tight. It is really tight, and you're thinking, what, how can we give? What are we going to give? We always have enough to give. Always. Start somewhere and make that first Right? First, I'm going to give this first, and then I'll work with what I have here. And it, be proportionate. Don't, if, if, you, if 10% freaks you out, just be obedient and start with 1%. 10 bucks a week. Something. But start. Move if you're not giving yet. Move. Take a step. And we want to challenge you in that. And then keep growing. Start with 1% for a year. Next year, you know what? I, I guarantee you, and I guarantee you, I promise, I promise you, that God will bless it. And next year, you'll go, you know what? We can give 2%. And next year, you know what? It may jump to 5%. Next year, you know what? Maybe 10%. And I know people who give up to 50%. God's blessed them with so much. And, and how many of us who tithe would say, I wish I didn't do it? Anybody? No. God is so good, isn't he? so good and I could give you story after story of, in my own life of God providing it just happened for us just happened for us this last week where God provided for us in two ways huge ways um, and it's, it's all God it's all God so, so we just want to challenge you to take a step if you're not giving anything just take a small step and move forward and grow in it I, I love the quote here and again this is in your book but this is so true. The hardest challenge in giving isn't moving from a certain percentage to 1% more. It's moving from nothing to something. I love that quote. I underline that. Anybody else catch that one this week? The hardest part is not moving from 1% to 2% or 10%. For some of us here who are having trouble giving at all, the hardest part for you is going to say, I just need to start giving something. I double dog, triple dog dare you to start giving and see what God does with it. I double dog. It, it, scripture says this is one area we can test him in it. In Micah. Read it. Hey, we can test him in this. He is so good. So, um, this is a big challenge for some of us. It really is. Um, some of us are pretty good with this. We, don't have, we love being generous. We just grab that gift. God's wired us that way and, and that's awesome. Some of us struggle to live open-handed. So, so this is a challenge and, and those of you that, that live generously and you don't, you don't uh, have a problem with it, thank you so much. Um, but, but don't make other feel, others feel bad because they don't. Rub off on them a little bit. Share your testimonies. How God is, has moved in that. Uh, encourage those people around you who maybe struggle a little bit more tonight in your groups. Um, encourage one another in this. Um, Remember tonight, okay, and I'm going to be done. Remember who God is. He's a generous, generous, giving, loving Father who has blessed us with so much so that we can take what He's given us and bless all the people around us with it. We are a blessing to be a blessing to others in His name. So tonight, just commit Move, make a, a commitment to give. Uh, let Him move in your heart to give, whatever that looks like. Um, but I, well, I would challenge you to, 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 to walk in that.
to move in that tonight. I'm going to pray, guys, and then uh, you guys can head off to your small groups, all right? Father, we thank you for tonight, and uh, again, we just praise you for your word. We praise you, God, um, for all the examples. We praise you, Father, for wanting our hearts and what matters most. And so, God, uh, it's my prayer that I just pray against the things that, that, that war for us, that um, grab a hold of our hearts, uh, help us see the truth, help us move in courage uh, in these areas. Uh, God, that, that uh, we would take a step uh, starting tonight. Um, with what you've given us and living open-handed and, and giving and being generous and just being obedient. So God, if our, if our view of you has been off and skewed, would you, would you make it known to us who you really are um, and that we would see you maybe in a new light, a different light as our Father who loves us and gives to us so much? God, that we could be a blessing to other people and we could give in your name. Um, and again, just living an open-handed life like, like you've shown us. You're the example of that in, in Jesus. We love you, Father. I just pray a special blessing on each group tonight as we meet together, that you would guide our conversations, that you would challenge us, that we would encourage one another in this area. God, that we would hold each other accountable in this area, that we would love each other in this area, and we would look so different from the world when it comes to stuff and when it comes to money in our lives. People would look at us and think we're nuts because we're so giving and so generous that we do it all in your name. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. Go to it.